young people, welcome to Newton's Attic Online round number two. I'm Engineer Bill and today we're going to build this really fun ski ball game here. So you all are, have your kit so you're already well aware of that, but anyway I thought I'd introduce it here. Uh, but before I do that I've got a little bit of business we need to take care of. First of all be sure to subscribe and like and do the notification thing. In other words, turn on your notifications. Okay, I know I'm not hip with all that young lingo stuff there, but anyway, there you go. Now, last time, if you all remember, we had a question, and the question was, what's been my favorite project and what would, that I've ever built, and what was the most difficult project I ever built? So I guess it was two questions, but the reason I'm saying it as one question is that both my favorite project and the most difficult project I ever built were the same thing, and let me show you a picture of it. Well, you'll see a picture of part of it. And I don't know how well this is going to show up, but it's called the launcher. And this is actually a young man flying through the air and landing in a lake. And what I built was, and you can see the very end of it back here, we'll, talk, we'll see a picture of the whole thing in just a second. But I always wanted to get shot out of a can and then fly through the air and land in a net or water. And so, since you can't go to Walmart and buy a human cannon, I just decided to build my own. And Keith, let's bring up that other picture there. Yeah, and there's a picture of it sitting down in the field of the cannon. It was huge, it's pretty big. It took me about two years to perfect it. It was pretty expensive to build. I spent about what you would spend on buying a new car to build this, but I really wanted one, so I, was, I didn't care about a car, I wanted a cannon. And over the course of two years, I learned a lot about welding and working with metal and applying the physics and math that I learned in high school and college to build this thing. And the reason it was the most difficult was because I built it very early on in my engineering career, so I was kind of new to all of this. So I had to learn a lot of things, learn how you tie different skills together, and I had to save up my money, so that was, uh, that was part of the challenge there. But it's called the launcher, and we launch, well, we have, it's been a long time since we've used it, but we'd like to get it back out. And this brings me to another idea I had just a minute ago. The launcher isn't the best name in the world for this toy, we call it. So what I would like to do is throw out to have anybody who comes up with a great name for this to, to text it to us or send us an idea for a name. Because we've had students name some of our projects in the past and you all come up with some really good names, certainly a lot better than I do. So if somebody has a great idea for what to name this, then I'd sure love to hear it. And maybe we can actually use it. Okay, so all the stuff is out of the way. Let's get started on our ski ball build here. And we're kind of kind of not go through the dry build as much uh, this time because this is a much longer and more complicated project and this ended up being a three hour long stream and I don't think you all would sit still for that. So I've got all my parts laid out here. You can't see them on the screen, but I've got them kind of strategically laid out here. You might be able to see them a little bit on the, on the side view there. Okay. And we're going to start with the part that's called the rotator. So what I need for you to do is grab all of the parts that are going to go with the rotator. And that's, first of all, we're going to start with this round disc here. You'll need that one. You're going to need this kind of funny looking little part here. You'll need what's called the angle gauge. Okay, that's got the numbers on it. Then this little part here with the IV on it. And then these three little triangular parts that are called gussets. Okay, there they are in the, in the side view there. And the two little parts that make up the uh, thumb screw. Okay, so let's grab all of those parts and get your, uh, let's get the wax paper ready here. And I got my paper towel over there so when I get glue on my fingers I can wipe myself off. Put my parts. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to get my glue ready because I'm going to need that in a minute. I also might need to get my, oops, I don't need those. Get my sandpaper ready. Now, if you notice, some of these parts have some staining on it. There's some brown, and it's, it's awfully hard for me to show this in the camera. I don't know if it'll show up any better on the main camera there or not. But some of these parts have some staining, and that's just uh, that just happens when the laser burns through. And I know it's kind of ugly, so you can take your sandpaper and you can pretty quickly sand a lot of that stuff off if it bothers you. If it doesn't bother you, you can certainly leave it on there. It's no big deal. But I like to have nice clean looking parts. The second thing you want to do with this round disc here is we want to sand the edge of it. And that's pretty important 
It doesn't have to be sanded super smooth, but let's just take the sandpaper, kind of go all the way around it a few wipes at a time, kind of get the edges a little bit rounded. You'll notice that there's a black ring. That's actually the burn from the laser cutting it. Kind of, you know, you don't have to get rid of that black ring or that black coloring. So let's go ahead and kind of sand this down for a little bit. Make sure you go all the way around like so. Okay, I'm getting a little pile of sawdust on my table there, but that's all right. Okay, then I want you to grab this piece here that says bottom piece. Okay, let's see. Yep, I'm right here. It says bottom piece on it. And we're going to put it on the table. Actually, we also want to sand the inside of that ring too. So let's do that very quickly. Kind of sand those edges smooth a little bit. I'm going to go around here even slower. Okay, well, we're going to be doing this for a few minutes. So I'm going to sand and kind of get this cleaned up. And the reason we're doing this is that this round disc is going to sit inside of this hole that's in this bottom piece and it has to be able to rotate and if it doesn't rotate your game won't work very well so you want to make sure that we get these parts nice and clean so that these parts rotate so I'm gonna do a little test fit here I put my bottom piece down then I put my disc inside of there and it looks like I've got a little bit of play which is perfect I don't want a lot of play or a lot of slop, just a little bit, but I want to make sure that my part will rotate easily. Hold this, hold the bottom piece down so it's flat against the table there. Let me get, there we go. That's a little bit better to see there. Okay, let me get my hand out of the way here. Okay, so I've got my disc inside my bottom piece and it turns pretty, you can see it turns pretty easily. Okay, just make sure that it does turn smoothly because that's how your rotator on your uh, ball shooter rotates. I'm going to move my kit out of the way because I don't really need it right now. All right, so I may do just a little bit more sanding to kind of clean this up, to make sure everything is good. All right, now that piece, yeah, we got uh, a pretty good fit here. If you're having trouble making a turn, you can take one of these pieces, stick it in here, and that gives you a way of turning it. So there we go. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. You don't want it too loose, uh, but loose is better than too tight. So anyway, all right. So I'm going to put my bottom piece, put this piece back up out of the way for now. I don't need it for a while. Now I've got my round disc here. Now it's important which face is facing up when you go to glue this together. And if you put the disc in front of you, right here, it's got four kind of holes in the middle. These four right here. Okay. Then there's on one side of the four holes, there's one slot. And then on the other side, there are two slots. Okay. You want to make sure when you have it sitting down on the table, that the side with two slots is to the right and the side with one slot is to the left. And that'll become apparent why we're going to do that in a minute. Okay. So I've got my disc oriented. Got the two, see the two slots here are on my right. The one slot's on the left. And you want to make sure you don't have it upside down like this. You want to make sure that the one slot is closer to you than it is the other direction. Okay, so we're all, does that make sense? Everybody good with that? Okay, so that's what you want it to look like relative to the way you're sitting or standing or however you're working. Okay, now I'm gonna take this piece here, this kind of funny little piece, and you notice it's not symmetric. It's got a steeper edge and a, a less steep edge. That fits in the hole like this with the less, with the steeper edge away from you. Okay, so it's pointing away from me. Move this just a little bit out better there. Okay, get these kind of out of the way so it doesn't confuse. All right, now I'm gonna put some glue on. Then go ahead, go ahead and glue this on. So now you'll notice some of you all may have the old glue bottles, but some of the new kits have this glue syringe. Okay, and we did that because it's, you don't need as much glue as we sent. 
and it saves on shipping costs and all that sort of stuff. It's also a little bit easier to get the glue out. Now my hand is pretty big. Some of you all may have a little bit of trouble using this. Do, do not do this number where you take and push like this. You will have glue all over everything in a hurry and you don't have a whole lot of extra glue to build this project. So if you have the two syringes, you need to be careful about how you use the glue. If, uh, now way, the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna hold it like this in my hand and I'm gonna take my thumb and my index finger and I can kind of push down. I can, I can meet out glue pretty easily like this. If your hand is too small to do that, just squirt a little bit out on your wax paper and use the glue tool, okay, the pointy end of the glue tool to uh, put the glue on. I'm gonna show this for people who are new. Okay, so I got a little bit of glue on the end there. I can take my, my glue stick here, a little bit of glue on the end of it, and I can spread it out. Now I don't need a lot of glue, just enough to cover the surface. It's almost like I'm just painting with glue rather than applying a lot. Just a very thin little film. And you wanna be careful not to use too much glue because you don't want to run out before you finish building your project. Okay, so I've got glue on the bottom part of my little piece here. Now I'm going to put it in, making sure that the steeper slant is away from me. Also, you want to make sure, I'm going to turn this around. You want to make sure that this slot and this slot line up. Where's the point my board? This slot right here. Are we close enough? Let me see if I can get this a little closer. Everybody can see it. Okay, see how this slot and this slot line up, and then this slot and this slot line up. That's the other way of knowing that you've got it oriented correctly. Okay, if you don't, you need to flip it around. Okay, so I've got that piece in. The next thing I want to do is take this little piece here, the IV piece, right? Okay. It doesn't really matter which side, but we're going to put a little bit of glue along the, uh, the edges here. Okay, don't put glue up on the peg itself, up on this part, or the tab. Okay, just a little bit of glue right there on these edges here. You can maybe see that. No, it's kind of hard to see, but anyway, you can see a little bit of the glue there. Okay, and it goes in right here like this. Okay, so it goes in the two slots on the piece that we just put in. Okay, see that there? Okay, we've got our part in. I'll orient it in different ways so you can see. All right, and what I should have done. Hey, Bill. Yes, so sir. So why does that say IV on it? <laughs> I was wondering when somebody was going to ask that. That's my own secret little mark that I like to put on at least every project. I'm the fourth in the line of Cloyd's, so that's my little uh, symbol that I use to identify myself. So it's a little Roman numeral four because I am Bill Cloyd the fourth. My father was the third, and then his father was the second, and so on. And that's just kind of become my little, my little thing. So did you ask that, or was the student asked that? That was me. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we want to put a little bit of glue on this edge here. If you want to take the piece back out to make it easier to put the glue on, that's fine. I uh, probably should have put the glue on before I put the piece in there. But anyway... So you want to get both sides of that thing glued up. Okay, see, I got a little bit of glue on this, this face right along, this edge right along here. And then I take the angle piece. Now, I'm going to let, let that sit for a second. I want to take the angle piece here. This is the piece with the little rounded section and the numbers on it. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom. I don't have to go around the rounded parts because the rounded parts there on the corners don't make contact with the wood, just on the flat part. Okay. Then it's going to go in the other two slots like this. And if you kind of rock it in like this, you can make those tabs all come together. Okay, so the part should look like this. See that there? Yeah. Now, the, the letters obviously are going to go toward this other part. And you'll understand later why. Get it in the center of the screen here. Okay. Having to look at various cameras. So, uh, all right. That's what your part should look like. Okay. I've got my two slots over here next to the small piece, my one slot over here next to the tall piece. 
Okay. Now we're going to set that back down. Now I'm going to grab one of these little triangular gusset pieces, okay? And I'm going to put glue on it too, and I'm going to put it along this face here and the bottom face. Both faces or both edges that have tabs need glue. So a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue, a little bit more glue, and then a little bit more glue. Now be sure not to get glue on the top edge of the tab, okay? So I've got glue on this face. Let me see if I can hold this line. Yeah, this edge up here has glue on it, and then this edge down here has glue on it, all right? You see that? Okay, then it goes in on the smaller side, and you kind of have to rock it in and kind of wiggle things a little bit to make sure it's all the way down, or all the way in, okay? So it's like that. Okay, see that? Okay. And we get the other small triangle and do the same thing in these back two slots here. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Got my second one ready. Is there anything that somebody can do if they have two um, top pieces and not a bottom piece? They got two top. Uh oh. Um, hmm. Let me think about that. They didn't get the bottom piece. No, that's not good. Okay, I'll think about it. Uh, it's okay for now. We'll have to send you a piece. You can still be able to play the game. Uh, don't worry. It's not going to prevent you. You'll understand later on how the bottom piece and the top piece all work together. You'll still be able to play with it. Uh, but we'll get that piece out to you, and uh, then you can put it on. And it, all the all this all these two pieces do is hold the uh, the ramp that we shoots the ball to the uh, the base. Okay, so I've got those two pieces in now. See that? Here we are. And I want to make sure that the bottom edge along here is in contact with this, and that the edge along here is in contact with the uh, the upright piece. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side with the taller piece. All right, we've got to put some glue along this edge here and glue along this edge here with the tabs. And this is going to go in to the slot and tabs or slots on the other side, the piece that actually has the angle gauge on it. Okay. And this one might be a little bit trickier to get it to go in. There we go. Okay. So now this is what the finished assembly should look like. Okay. Got my big gusset over here, right there. All right. Got my little gussets over here. Got my little, almost looks like somebody with a mohawk. Um, all right. And the way I did it, I can, a little, I can see I can read my IV down. You probably can't see that, but my little IV is upright. If you didn't get your IV up right, that's okay. All right, I want to set that aside. We're going to let that kind of uh, let the glue kind of dry a little bit on that, and we'll come back to that later. Now let's get the two little pieces that make up the thumb screw, the little round piece with the nut in it, and this funny little um, U-shaped piece. Okay, and this is a real quick little build. There's a little bit of glue on the ends here with the tab. It's not much to glue to. Okay. Right there, got glue on the ends of those. And it goes straight down in like this. Now make sure that it goes on the side of the disc where the nut is sticking up. The bottom side, the nut should be flush. I don't want to turn this up. Well, I can turn it over. I'll hold it like this. Okay, see the nut is flush with this surface on this side. And if I, maybe if I hold that just right, you can see how the nut is sticking up above the round part here. Okay? All right, let's take those two parts, set those aside. I'm gonna wipe a little, little, little bit of that glue off there so it doesn't glue itself to the table. Okay, now let's move on to, we're gonna build the ramp. That's the part that looks like these little J-shaped pieces here. Okay, you're gonna need these. Get, grab one of them, it doesn't matter which one. 
Uh, these two pieces are mirror images of each other. Okay, just grab one of them, doesn't matter. And we're going to put it on the table in front of us with the, uh, the numbers sticking down. All right, then I'm going to grab, I need nine, I believe, of the medium length pegs. Okay, those are the ones that they're the most of. There should be 12 of those little guys in here. Okay. They're about the width of your thumb, maybe a little bit narrower, than, a little narrower than the width of my thumb. But grab those. We've had a request for a break. A break? Well, we can take a break for a second. Okay. All right, well, we'll take a break for just a second. And we'll, be, we'll be right back. Hmm? I was going to say, should people be looking to make sure they have all their parts? Yeah, they certainly sure should do that, yeah. So. So, oh, well, while we're on break, why don't you guys check and make sure you got all your other parts. If you want to do some sanding to clean up your parts. And we'll be back, back in five minutes.
Okay, we are back after that somewhat awkward exit, but let's get back into it. Now, I think we stopped. Uh, we were just getting ready to build the ball ramp. Okay, so we'll need these pieces here. It uh, doesn't matter which piece you start with, but grab one of the pieces that's the wider of the two. There's a skinny one and a wide version, okay? You can see this is a little skinnier. Um, put it on your table in front of you with the numbers face down, okay? Then grab all of your medium length pegs, which should be the ones you should have about 12 of those. There's the really short ones and then the longer ones, and it's a little bit difficult to tell the long ones from the short ones, but the, for the long ones from the medium ones. But grab the ones that are most alike, that are there about 12 of, and we're gonna start putting those pegs in the holes in your J-shaped piece, but skip the second one. Let's see, let me bring this over here. We don't need a peg in this hole right here, the one that's second from the end, that's right in the middle of the curve part. Okay, do not put a peg in that. So we're gonna skip that one. The rest of them all get pegs. And if you have a little bit of trouble, every now and then some of these dowel rods are a little bit fatter or not quite round, and they have a little bit of trouble going down in the holes. If that's the case, just grab your sandpaper. This wood is pretty soft. You can sand those pegs down, like that one right there. I had a little bit of trouble getting it in. You can sand the pegs down pretty quickly, and they'll fit, or they should be less tight. So I'm gonna put all these in. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and put that one, and then this one. All right, so I've got Nine peg, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pegs out of a possible 10 holes, skipping the one there on the end. Okay, now grab one of the two skinny J parts. Doesn't matter which one, they're the same. Um, oh, before you do that, we need to put some glue on here. So we're gonna put a little dab of glue right, let me swing this around here so you guys can see this a little bit better. Oops little dab of glue at the base of each peg, kind of on the peg and on the flat piece as well. Is that showing up all right? We, okay, just a little, little dot of glue on each one. Okay, let me go do it. And then make sure it's a small dot. You don't need much. You wanna be careful about how much glue you're using. Okay, if you use more than about a milliliter of glue, you can look on your little syringe there. If you have a glue bottle, you're fine. You can use whatever much you want. Okay, then I want to put just a very thin, light um, line of glue in between the pegs. Not very heavy at all, just very wispy little bit of glue, okay? Not very much, because I don't want to run out of glue. I don't want you guys to run out of glue before you finish building this. There's a lot of gluing to do. Okay, so I can't pick this up to show you because my pegs will fall out. But anyway, if we can go to the... Uh, for the big shot. You can see I've got little streams of glue in between my pegs. Okay, now I'm gonna swing this around here so I can get to it more easily. All right. Then just work that piece, the second piece, the other J-shaped piece, down onto those pegs. Now it takes a little bit to get all the pegs to line up, and every now and then you may encounter a hole that's a little tight. If you push hard, you can actually get them to go down in. Sometimes you may splinter the wood just a little bit. That's okay if that happens. You can also use your glue tool to push on the pegs to get them to kind of line up with the holes. All right. Now we're gonna take our time and do this because it's kind of hard to get all these little, little pegs to line up. Then push it all the way down. Oops, pop back out on this end. Uh, that peg fell out, but I'll deal with that in a minute. Push it all the way down so that you're making a little wooden J-shaped sandwich there. Okay. All right, so it should look something like that. All right, see I've got this top piece is flush now down to the bottom piece, all right? And one peg fell out, so I'm gonna put that peg back on. Now, Grab all of your little spacers, these little round little guys right here, okay? Grab a handful of those, okay? And we're gonna start, we're gonna put two, actually, whoop, I'm jumping, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I wanna go ahead and put another little drop of glue on the peg, 
just like we did earlier. I have a little bit of an issue with those holes lining up. Now, if you do have trouble with the holes, trying to get your peg down in your hole, you have a little trouble with it lining up, take your sandpaper, okay, and take one of your pegs, and you're going to sand a little point on the end of your peg. And it doesn't take very long. You just kind of have to sand it. Let me get where you guys can see. Okay, I'm going to sand a little bit and then kind of rotate and rotate and slide as I do this to kind of put a little bit of a point or what's called a chamfer on the end of these pegs, okay? And if that's, if you're having trouble getting your pegs down in some of the holes, this will help make them go down in more easily. The other thing, I'll show you a little technique here in a second too. Now I know this is going to be really hard to see, but I've got kind of a little point on the end of, let's see how close I can get before it gets really blurry. A little point on the end of my peg there, okay? See that? Because I could get over to the center of the camera too. All right. Doesn't have to be very big, but just enough to kind of help it go down in those little holes. All right. Now, put another little drop of glue on each peg. Are we getting any uh, slowdown requests? There's something that says I'm behind like 45 minutes because I've been pausing, which is not possible since we've only been pausing for <laughs> 30 minutes. But, um, right. And then somebody else asked if we could slow down a little bit. And somebody yeah. Else said we're, we're going to slow. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down here. All I'm doing right now is putting little drops of glue at the base of the peg and that's and then we don't put any glue in between like I did below okay just a little drop of glue on each peg at the bottom you can put one on each side actually that's probably the best thing to do little tiny little drop not very much at all okay Okay. You mean the before the yeah. the bottom the, the head hasn't made his little sandwich yet. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit there. I'm gonna just take my time. I'm gonna put one spacer on. Okay. And then kind of twist it. So you know, one thing we could uh, talk about this kit uh, yeah. while we're catching up. Sure. And I think they got the idea of putting the, the spacers on there. Yeah. Um, this kit took a little bit of time to get out. It sure did. This was, I think it we was a challenge. A well, yeah, we had all kinds of issues, I suppose. All these kits are cut on a laser. All right. And we had some trouble with our laser. One thing that we had trouble with, well, we had several problems. But one problem we had is in between the last one and this one, as we were making these kits, the weather got a lot warmer which means the air got a lot more humid. And we were having trouble with water getting into our, the, part of the laser, the way the laser works, it uses some compressed air um, as, part of the, as part of how it cuts. Yeah, basically the, if you think of a, the compressed air acts kind of like blowing out a candle. If you shoot a laser at wood, it wants to catch on fire. Yeah. And so the compressed air basically blows out the fire to keep it from burning the wood. We want to, we kind of want to vaporize just the part of the wood we want to get rid of but we don't want to burn any of the rest of it. So the air helps us do that. But uh, water is a little too effective at uh, yeah, well, they, out the fire. Right, and the water, the laser comes down a little metal tube. And in the bottom of that tube, there's a lens. Okay, and that focuses the laser and makes it cut better. And that lens, if it gets water on it, well, damn, it can damage it because the laser is very hot. You can actually stop doing that while you're talking just and, to let people Okay, well, you know, okay. And we didn't want to damage our lens because we only had one spare lens, and the way things are shipping right now, if we broke both lenses, then our laser would be dead and we wouldn't be able to make our parts. So that was an issue we had. And these are all part of 
issues that everybody who actually manufactures things, there's con constant maintenance to keep your machines working. You don't just turn them on and go away and come back and everything's made. Every now and then you can do that on a 3D printer, but still they take a lot, machines take a lot of maintenance to keep them going. Yeah, and another issue uh, we ran into um, was lead times on some of our stuff. You know, the delivery times are a little bit messed up right now. Stuff you could get, you know, in a day or two days normally, uh, you either have to wait, you know, longer to get it, or you have to source it from someone that you don't usually buy from, and uh, that takes time to find them. Right, yeah. Since everything is shipping more slowly, we, uh, we had to wait on some parts. Another issue that we had is that the laser is in a big, long glass tube. And we'll, we, should, we should bring it in or maybe show a picture of that sometime. Uh, and lasers get very, very hot. So they have what's called a water jacket that flows around the laser. And there's a pump and a machine that acts to refrigerate that water. As it goes through, the water gets hot when it goes through the laser. It goes through a tube down to a little miniature refrigerator that's about this big. And then circulates back around and goes back again. And that water constantly flowing keeps the laser cool. Well, our cooler quit working. And so we couldn't run the laser and let it get hot. It would destroy the laser. So we had to order one of those. Well, we had to find one first. And we did find one in California, but it was gonna be very expensive to ship and it was gonna take several days to get here. And Keith managed to find one in Ohio the next state over. And so he drove one night, he drove for, I don't know, four or five hours to go get this thing. And met the gentleman late at night on a Friday night, picked it up, came back, and we got it back working. So that was another little challenge we had with this project. And then there were other little things that we had to deal with that it's kind of hard to explain. But anyway, so. I think it's you know, something, we, something we try to point out to students that come in is that you know, all of this is part of engineering. I mean, you, may, you may not think about it, but uh, there are so many things that are going to happen in your project, especially a bigger project, that you just cannot anticipate. Uh, some of your designs aren't going to work, so you're going to have to redesign parts. Some of them won't, you know, some things you think are going to work, you can't actually make. You know, you go to make it on the machine, and the machine can't actually do what you wanted it to do. Yeah. And then, of course, like we ran into, you have unexpected problems that crop up where you actually have machine or component failures you've got to deal with. So, you know, being able to, to push through failure is a big part, or push through obstacles anyway, is a big part of engineering. Yeah, well, and failure is a part of engineering, too. You want to catch the we, uh, you did. Okay, yeah, so now what I'm doing, I put one set of discs on with a little tiny bit of glue. Do not put any glue in between here and here. Okay, let me get this so you guys can see. Okay, I put one of the little spacers on. Now I'm going to put a little drop of glue on top of each spacer, and I'm going to put another spacer on top of that. So I'm making a, a two-spacer sandwich here on top of this. Just one or two little drops of glue on each spacer is all you need. You don't need very much glue at all. And I can tell, if you look at this last little peg that's sticking up here, yeah, you might not be able to tell, this peg is crooked. And I'm gonna have to take that one out in a minute. And you may be, you all may be having, some of you all may be having the same problem. If your pegs are crooked, that's gonna cause a problem in a few minutes, but don't worry about that, there's a way to fix it. Okay, so I've got glue on all nine of my little spacers here. I'm working off camera. Okay. Then I'll put another spacer on each one, kind of rotate it around a little bit to get the glue to squish around the whole surface. Okay. How's everybody doing out there? Are we all getting caught up? Chat me and let me know. <laughs> You're gonna harden up. We didn't give don't, him. don't don't do that. We didn't give him that part of the syringe. Yeah. Yes, you'd have to push awfully hard to get that to go in. Now another thing you can do. See, I got a lot of big. I got a good big glue blob here. Let's see. Right here. Okay. See, it looks like a hamburger with all the mayonnaise squishing out of it. I want to wipe that up because we don't want that in the way. <clears throat> We're going to do a lot of wiping here in a little while because we want to make sure our thing is glue-free other than where it's supposed to be. 
Okay, if you're getting a lot of squish like that, that means you're using too much glue. All right, so I got my other nine spacers. I've now got two spacers on each of my pegs. I'm just going to kind of pass that through there to show everybody. Okay, and then the one hole that's open there. All right, now we do it again. Put some more glue on top of each one of these spacers. And if you want, just to be really nerdy about this, the spacers have little circles drawn on them. You can put the, if you have your circles facing up, you can put just a little drop of glue on each circle and that way you know you've got it evenly distributed. And, oops, whoa, too much glue. Take my finger and kind of spread that out there. Okay, now I've got all, now this is where it starts getting fairly tricky. We're going to take our other small J-shaped piece, J-shaped piece, right. and we're going to put it over the pegs and down onto the tops of the spacers. Okay, now some of these pegs aren't going to line up exactly, so that's where you take your little glue tool and you can kind of push in between the spacer and the J-shaped piece and kind of wiggle those pegs around a little bit until they drop down into the hole. Now, if you have trouble, like I'm having trouble with this one peg here, I'm gonna to have to push on it pretty hard to get it to come over. If you can't get all of the pegs, or all of the, if, uh, all the pegs to go through all the holes, go ahead and push one of the peg, push any of those pegs out, but make sure your spacers stay in place and then you can sharpen it like I did earlier and come back in and push it in from the top. Uh, and another thing you might have to do, I had to do this earlier on my test fit, is if you've got a peg that won't go in very easily, get it started and then take your glue tool and push down. You can get your weight, get your thumb on it and push down pretty hard. The other thing you can do, if you have a hammer, you can tap them in and that, that, always, that should work pretty well. If you don't have a hammer, you can substitute with something like a heavy glass or even a coffee mug will, will actually work pretty well as a hammer. Okay, you just use the bottom of the mug and kind of tap, tap your parts in. Okay, or any other thing that you might want to use as a hammer would work. Hopefully you won't need it. All right, so now we've got three quarters of our sandwich built. We've got the bottom piece. We've got the skinny J piece. Oops, skinny J piece. Two spacers here. Let's see this this way. Yeah, right like that. Okay, I got my two spacers right in there. My top small J piece is on, or ramp piece. And this should be the peg should be sticking up a little bit above the top surface. And so you guessed it, we're gonna go ahead and glue that last piece on. And we put a little bit of glue around each peg again, and a little bit of glue in between. And I'm probably working off camera again. A little bit of glue like we did when we glued the first small J piece or ramp piece to the top or to the bottom of the uh, bigger one. There are a couple people that are behind some okay. Maybe when you're finished with this part of the process, we'll take another Yes. Short yeah, that'd be a good time to take another break. Let everybody get caught up. If you have any questions, I'd like to hear those or comments. It'd be great. All right. Got one little peg that's causing a tiny bit of a problem. There it goes. If you push hard, it'll go. Okay. And then when you're done, you should have a ramp that looks like this, okay? Make sure that there aren't any spaces in between the four pieces of wood and the peg, and then the spacers. Okay, then the other thing you can do, and I'm gonna take a few minutes to do this right now, so you gotta do it when the glue is wet. 
I'm gonna go down in and wipe out any excess glue that I've got squeezed uh, squeezed out. Okay, so there's kind of like at the very end, you should you see a little bit of glue right there. Um, you can kind of see what it should look like. Rotate around this way. You can see how I've got my spacers in there and the little J piece. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this piece up. I guess we can take another break here in just a minute. Let everybody get caught up. And we will continue on. And are we at some point going to be sharing the next project with them? We are. And I'm going to give everybody a little teaser. The next project is actually in the picture. You're looking at it right now. Let's see if anybody can figure it out. So we're going to. Okay, so we're going to go. All right, we'll be back and no, go ahead. Why don't we do uh, 10 minutes? So we'll okay. call this a bathroom break. Bathroom right break, yeah. All right, see you in a few minutes, guys. 10 minutes. 10 minutes.
fucking oh there's a pause there. Okay, we are back after that nice short little break. Uh, one thing I need to remind everybody of is don't forget you can rewind this at any point in time, even while it's live, and watch uh, to go back and watch anything you may you think you may have missed. So just keep that in mind as we're going through. All right, let's move on. The next set of pieces we're going to glue together is called the target stack. And you're going to need this big piece here and all the four pieces that are shaped like this, okay? that have these funny little grooves in them. Okay, what those grooves do will become apparent later on. And then this big square piece here. And this little funky piece here. Now, a real quick note here. In your manual, it says you need two of these, but you really only need one. And the reason is, this is another one of those little engineering lessons here real quickly. As I was originally designing this whole assembly, it looked a lot different than this, what I've got here. Um, and as I was going through, I realized I could make this out of thicker wood and change the design and make it a lot simpler. But I had already written part of the manual, and, and originally in the manual, this, was, this piece was composed of two thinner pieces glued together. But once I realized I could use one thicker piece, that made it easier, but I forgot to go back and change that in the manual. So that's why it says two in the manual, but you really only need one here. Okay, so now let's take... We'll set the, the pieces with the funky, funny shapes on them aside, and you want this part right here. The one that says, oops, there we go. All right, you want to put that face up on the table with the part that says top edge away from you. Okay, see this top edge right here? All right, so what we want to do, set that like that, then grab the piece, actually put your four pegs in. There are four long pegs, you're gonna need the four long ones and they're gonna go in the four holes, okay? And what you can do now, we'll take and put just a tiny little bit of glue, just like we did before, at the bottom, well, at the top, oops, ooh, too much glue, of each peg, you know, where it meets the piece of wood, okay? Now, this also reminds me, my piece of wood here is a little bowed. If you have several heavy objects, like some books, or something heavy, run grab that if you're having trouble with yours being bowed, which I am. And what we'll do is once we get this thing all glued up, we're gonna set the heavy object on top of it and that'll help flatten it out. All right, so I got a little bit of glue at the base of each of my pegs, but don't put any glue anywhere else on this piece of wood. I gotta take this uh, glue tool here and get some of that glue. All right, now take the piece that says, it's the funky piece that got these little, looks like aquarium life growing on it, okay? The one that says 3 sixteenths, right up here, 3 slash 1 six. Turn it over on the side opposite of 3 sixteenths, and we're gonna put a little glue, very light uh, amount of glue, just all over the back side of that, okay? And don't use too much glue because we don't want to run out before we finish the, finish the project. But you want to make sure to put just a tiny little bit down each one of those little fingers that sticks down. Okay, real thin little bead. Okay, get it over here all along the corners and the edge, around the holes, and just kind of zigzag back and forth. You can write your name if you want. Okay. All right, so I've got plenty of glue on the back side. Now, turn it back over, and it goes down on top of the four pegs. It slides all the way down and pushes on that side that had the writing on it that says, do not put glue on this face. Okay, so it should look like that. Let's get this out of the way. See, there we are. Okay, I've got it glued right like that, okay? And hopefully you guys are starting to figure out what those little grooves do. If not, don't worry, they'll make sense in a little while. All right, now put a little bit of glue on the top face of this, just like we done on the bottom face. We're gonna go more glue, more glue. Okay, I'm gonna put some little wigglies there and glue here and a little bit over, okay. Down along these fingers. Now the other thing you need to be careful of 
to make sure you don't get any glue down in the little grooves. Okay, you can go right up next to it, but you want to make sure it's not down in the groove. The reason is the balls, once they go through the holes in the target, roll through these glue, roll through these grooves or these channels. And if there's glue in there, it may prevent the ball from coming out, and then you only get to play once, and that's it. Your balls are stuck in the thing there, and that's no good. All right, so I got more glue on there. And hopefully, I've so far, I've used about this much glue out of the first syringe. Hopefully, you guys are somewhere near there. If you've already exhausted this whole um, syringe, or you're way down here, you may want to slow down on your glue use, or you're going to run out. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go along here. I have a question for Keith, too. Okay. Um, Keith, does the video upload immediately, or does it take, is it an hour or two after? Uh, it takes an hour or two for the final. Okay, that's uh, what you said. Yeah. Okay, so I got plenty of glue now on my face here. You can see that. I'm going to put the one that says quarter inch, okay, with a quarter inch up, down over the pegs, and all the way down onto the top of the one that says 3 16 And you may have to stick your finger or the little glue tool under there to get these pegs lined up. I know that can be a little tricky. And push it all the way down, okay, and I got some glue squishing out, so I'm going to wipe this glue off. And go ahead right now and take time. If there's any glue inside these little channels here, be sure to get all of that out. You can even take your little glue tool and just make sure it's flat. Okay, kind of wipe as much of that out as you can get. You don't want any glue blobs drying in your channels there and making a blockage. You don't, you don't want that. So I'm going to wipe down all through these little grooves here. Make sure there's no glue anywhere that can cause a problem. Another thing you can do if you want, and I kind of do this to kind of slow things down here, you can grab one of the little steel balls. I'm going to grab one over here and just drop it in the top of each groove and make sure it rolls all the way out to the bottom. See how I'm doing there? Okay, I'm going to catch it. All right, that one works. Whoops, try that again. Okay, it should be plenty of space. The ball, the groove is a lot wider than the ball, so it should, it should all work pretty well. But there you go. That's, that's something you can test to make sure that there's no glue. All right, now I've got the quarter inch showing upright. Do not put glue on this face. Okay. Grab this funky piece here that has all the little shapes in it, all right? And you want to hold it so that, let's see, the, you got a big circle here in the middle, you've got an oval here, the hexagon up here. You want the hexagon to be up toward the upper right, okay? And then this funky little lily pad shaped thing, okay? Where's our, yeah. Okay, this is how it's going to go on. So I've got my quarter inch plate like this. Let's back up a little bit here. There we go. Right about there. Get this ugly thing out of the way. All right. And I've got this one right here. Okay, I've got the, the, the funny little shaped hole is to the left. Circles in the middle. Hexagon is up to the right. It's going to go on like this. Okay, but I want to put glue on the back side of this piece here. Don't put it on this side. Put it on the back side. Okay, the side that's going to go down. So I'm going to put plenty of glue. So when I'm holding it, I'm doing the back side, the funny little shape piece is to the right. So I'm going to just put some more glue, 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 a little glue trail here and there and all around. Okay, make sure you don't get too close to the edges of the holes because that just means glue will come out and you don't really want glue going in your holes there. Okay. You can also do little dots like that. It's a good way of metering out your glue there so it's not, uh, you're not using too much. Okay, so I've got glue on my, the back side of my target board. Okay, now you're going to push it over.
the pegs again. And that can be a little tricky because you got to get everything to line up. It's like this guy right here. I'm having, you know, okay, so I'm having a little trouble getting over that one peg. I'm going to push that peg out to make it go all the way down. Okay. Then I'm going to take this peg and I'm going to sharpen it like we, we did earlier to get it to go down in the hole. So I'm going to sharpen this peg, put a little bevel or a little chamfer on the end of it. Okay. So we kind of need to work quickly here. We don't want too much of our glue to dry before we get that peg down in there. Okay. But I got my other three pegs lined up just fine. Put a little bit of glue just on this, on the length of this uh, peg here. Okay, it doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, then I'm going to push it down through there. Now, since it's tight, I'm going to take my glue tool here. And I'm going to push and wiggle and make it go all the way down. Now, you want to make sure that on both sides, that peg is all the way flush with the top of this surface here. So it's flush there. It's not sticking up any. And I make, make sure this one's down. It's flush too, okay? The bottom two, the, the two that are down here near this little hole, leave those sticking up, okay? Because they're going to do something in a minute. But the top two, you want kind of flush. You want it nice and flush. And you can see if I hold it by the end there. See that one, you can't see it. But this one's sticking up just a little bit so you can see it there. And then grab this piece, all right? And it's going to go over, we'll put some glue on the back of it in a second, but it's going to go over the two pegs that are sticking out the bottom, just like that, okay? So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it and glue it down. And then we will be done with that particular part, okay? And in a second, I'm going to get one of the steel balls and just kind of test my thing, my channels to make sure everything is working right. Okay, so I've got this piece glued on. I got a tiny little bit of glue there I need to clean up. Okay. All right, now, where's my... This kind of give everybody a little bit of a chance to get caught up and slow things down. You don't have to do this stuff if you don't want. I'm just doing this to kind of help. Okay, so I want to put the ball in. Okay, and it drops out. I just want to test it in each hole to make sure it's going to come out the bottom. Yep. Okay, even a little one at the bottom there. Okay. Now, you may be wondering why this oval here doesn't have a hole in the bottom of it. Well, it's a trap. So if you just shoot, you launch your ball up in there and get stuck in there, you don't get any points. You have to pull it out. So that's the trap. That's what that little oval is for. Okay, now if you're having any trouble with this not sitting flat, you want to make sure there's no space in between any of the layers, okay? You want to make sure it's nice and flat, okay? Get you a heavy object, like a book or a stack of books or something, and just set them on top of that, and that should hold it flat, okay? All right, so we're going to set that aside, let it harden up just a little bit, and now we're going to go do the base. Okay, and let's give everyone Okay, so we don't need to take a break, but just no. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to do I'm going to clean up some of my parts here because some of these parts have a little bit of burn on them. So I'm just going to kind of sit here and do this a little bit, particularly the parts that are going on the outside. But you know so while I'm waiting, we'll gather up these parts here. You want the base that has the numbers on it, okay. I'll give you a little engineering lesson here in a second, too. You're going to want this part here. Okay. Should be two of Whoops. <laughs> All right, that's my fault. Okay, this part here, two of those are identical. And then the part that's on the back that says Newton's Attic. Okay, that's the backboard. Now, kind of slow things down and give everybody a chance to catch up. Why do I have a big hole right here? Okay. Oh, why do I have the big hole here? Okay, it does absolutely nothing. But... Here's why it's, you know, I should have brought the little thing. Um, when you buy this wood and you're cutting these parts out of it, you put them on the laser, the big laser bed there, okay? You want to put the parts as close together as possible so you get the maximum number of parts out of a sheet of plywood because, you, you know, the sheet of plywood costs money. And you want as little waste as possible to make your cut as efficient as possible. And I realized that this portion of the base right here 
In a few minutes, you'll see it just disappears under this, uh, this big thing here. It doesn't do anything. So I realized I could cut another part of our kit out of this. And it's actually this little part right here, okay, on your rotator part came out of this little square hole here. So you can see how it fits in there just like that. Okay, and that was a way of using uh, that extra little piece of wood and getting a little bit more efficiency out of my wood cut there. Okay. And remember, you can pause and replay at any point in time, so don't get upset if you're getting behind. But I'm going to take a minute or two and kind of sand on my parts here and clean them up and make them look nice. I can also do this sanding after I've glued it together. I can sand the outer parts. I can't sand the inner parts, but the inner parts don't show, so it doesn't really matter too much if you don't sand them. Okay, so I'm cleaning up these parts here. Those bottom three parts, they're on the bottom. Oh, there's the other one. Okay, these three parts here, you don't have to sand those because they're on the bottom. You can if you want, just to make it look nice. That's always good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start gluing pieces together. I've got the base here, and it's got some numbers on the front. Okay, I'm going to put those down, face down. And I'm going to take any one of these three parts here. They're all the same. They're identical. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the side, you know, like we've done before. On the edge that has the tabs. Not the curved edge, the straight edge. Okay. And then I'm going to glue them into the slots that are in the base. Okay. So there's one there. So I've got two more slots, two more pieces. We'll go ahead and get a little bit of glue on there. I need some engineering jokes while we've got these silence. <laughs> well, how do you tell an extroverted engineer? He looks at your shoes instead of his own when he's talking to you. You have to know what extroverted means. It means you like being around people. <laughs> sort of. Okay, so I've got my three pieces glued in, my three base pieces there. All right, now I'm going to turn it up on edge. It doesn't matter which edge. Okay, I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to put a little bead of glue all along this long edge along here. Okay, where all the tabs are. And this is going to take a few minutes. If anybody wants to text me an engineering joke, if I think it's good, I'll... Oh, you also want to put glue on the... Uh, the the face of the brace there the bottom brace so i've got glue right along this face too see that right there okay Another thing we could do here in a few minutes to let everybody catch up, we could talk a little bit about parabolas. Woo. Okay. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to turn this around and take this piece here. Okay. And it's going to glue on those tabs like so, such that. This curved part goes up, okay, when I have the numbers facing up. So the curved part, or the slanted part here, should be on the same side as the numbers. And we'll turn it like this. Hopefully it'll kind of stay on its own there. This is another thing. If you have several large books, this will help you glue this part together. And I'll show you in a minute. I've got something other than books that I'm going to use. 
but books will work perfectly. So if you can have somebody gather you up four or five, you know, pretty thick books, might be helpful. May not need it, but looks like I might need it here to help hold my parts together while they dry. Okay, so I got glue on all these faces, all these edges. So I'm going to piece the other part on there. And I have to wiggle it around to make sure all the... Okay, so now... Okay, now it starts to get a little delicate here. Slide of the edge. Okay. So I've got it sitting like so. The next thing I want to do is, you all, you may not have, your hands probably aren't big enough to hold it, but what you need to do, let's see if I can't hold it. You got to get glue along this back edge here. Okay, along this back edge right here with the tabs and the end of that because that's how the backboard glues on. So you can just let it sit like this. A little bit of glue on each edge like we've always done. All right. Then I take the backboard and I put it on so that the Newton's Attic faces the rest of the uh, base. Okay, so everything should look. Once you kind of get to this position, it'll more or less hold itself together. Okay, let's come down. See, I got the Newton's Attic facing. Now, what I was talking about earlier, so I'm having just a little bit of trouble with this one. It's curved just a little bit, so it's wanting to pop out. So I can take a couple of heavy things. And in my case, I happen to have a couple of big cans of highly flammable liquid. But I'm going to just squish them together and I kind of hold it together until the, the glue uh, gets sticky. So I'm going to set this out of the way. Actually, I'm not going to set this out of the way because the next thing is we've got to glue some of this more together. All right, if you happen to have some rubber bands, that's also a good thing that you can put around it. And I'm going to put a couple of rubber bands around mine. If you have some tape, you can tape it together. Okay, that'll kind of help hold the uh, the front end together. All right, now the next thing that'll kind of help hold everything together. Grab your target stack here. Okay, now you notice on the back side there are six little grooves or six little slots. Okay, see those right there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Well, those line up with these six little slots right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, on the slanted part of the sides of the base. So we want to test fit this first, make sure everything's looking looking all right. I really do think you ought to test fit that. Okay, so see how it fits down in there? Let's see. See, it fits right along there. Okay. This front edge right here should be down on the uh, base of the board. Okay. And depending on how curved your backboard is, it should be making some contact along the top here. If there's a little bit of groove there, that's fine. That's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so let's take this back off. I'm going to be careful so that I don't damage my, uh, or make my finger part. And I put a little bit of glue along the top edge. Can you see that? Yeah, along the top edge here. Uh, and these you can put glue on the pegs if you want, or the tabs. Okay, I'm gonna come all the way. Don't don't go all the way down, but go most of the way down. Okay. Then I want to fit this down on top of there, and it's kind of hard to see. You just kind of have to set it on there and then kind of wiggle it around until it drops into those tabs. Okay, there we go. So I got mine in. Okay, it all looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit there. Okay, this is what everything should look like at this point. Okay. Now... 
we're going to put the side walls on. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to put the scoring gate. Okay, so you'll need this part right here. Looks like a little, this guy right here. Okay, and it says glue this face down, apply glue to this face on it. Okay, that is going to go right here, but it goes in a specific spot. So what you might want to do, once you glue this down, it won't move very fast. So you got to work quickly here, this next couple of steps. You also want this piece here, this really funny looking little piece here. It says glue this face back or assemble this face back. That piece with the words here is going to go right in here like this with those words facing away from you. And it's important that they face away because this thing is not exactly symmetric. Now I'm test fitting this in here. You really do want to test fit this before you do it. See how I've got it down in there? Okay. So there are three notches in the top of this, right along there. The three tabs in this actually lock down in there. Okay. And you might even be able to do this. That would be kind of tricky. Yeah, you could try it that way if you want. Okay. But we want to make sure that it's all the way down and everything fits well before we put the glue on. Once we put the glue on, we only have you know, 10 or 15 seconds or so before the glue really starts getting sticky and it makes it really hard to assemble this. Okay, the other thing is, um, when you go to glue this part down, as long as you've got it butted up, clear up against the bottom part, just push it as far forward as it will go and that should put it in pretty good position for allowing this part to be glued in. Okay, so that'll make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the back side of this. Okay, and it's kind of skinny, so it's a little bit challenging. A little bit of glue on each one. Go ahead and put glue over the words. All right. And drop it in and slide it all the way forward so that it's pushing against the bottom of our little ball stack there. Then I'm going to put a little bit of glue. Let's see, let's get up close. This little notch right here, this little corner there. Okay, then on top of this tab, you can put it on all of them because they all make contact with that ball gate or the scoring gate. A little bit more, a little glue there. Okay, then I got the words going towards the back and I'm gonna drop that in. And there we go. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, make sure it's all the way down so that those little tabs are in right along in here, that those tabs go all the way down. If you don't do that, you may have a little bit of trouble getting this thing to work right. And I've also got a lot of little glue. That's okay. I'm not worried about the glue there. Okay, now just to make this thing a little stronger, I'm going to run a little bit of glue right along this edge here. Okay, just a tiny little bit and you, you can put just some blobs in there and then we'll take the glue tool in a minute and kind of spread that out. So that's going to make that part a little stiffer, a little stronger. So I can take my glue, uh, glue tool and kind of rub that glue all along there. So I have a nice uniform little bead. It's called, it's called a fillet. Is that like a fillet? It's spelled F-I-L-L-E-T, but it's, we pronounce it fillet. Uh, at least I do in the modeling industry, right, Keith? Yep. Fillet, yeah. See, it is we're... a fillet. It's two L's instead of one. That's not so a Kentucky a fillet. thing. Oh. No, it's not a Kentucky thing. That's an official thing. Okay. Now I've got that part assembled. That looks all looks really good. Let's grab these two pieces here. Okay, the, tides, the two sides, are again, they're identical, so it doesn't matter which one. And to kind of slow things down for a second, my parts are really ugly. You can probably, actually, this is so burned up that you can probably see some of that staining on there. I'm going to sand that off. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute or two to kind of make my parts look pretty and let everybody get caught up. And we're nearing, we're about 90% done with our build, guys. So I know this has been a nice, this has been a long build. But it's a fun game once you get it done. 
All right, Bill, so I've got a joke. Okay. An engineer joke. Uh-oh. All right, so an optimist and a pessimist and an engineer look at a glass of water. Mm-hmm. And the optimist says the glass is half full. Yeah. And the pessimist says the glass is half empty. Wait a minute. The, I'm an engineer. Let me take a guess at the punchline. <laughs> You've heard this, huh? No, I haven't heard it, but let okay. me guess. You've got the wrong glass. Yeah, close. <laughs> the engineer says the glass is twice as big as, as it, needs it needs to be. be. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> you actually knew. No, my wife. <laughs> I've never guessed that. Before. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, we can. Well, we're pretty close to being done. Uh, let's go ahead. Push through, oh yeah, let's push and through and, and we'll give and, the glue time to dry while we're uh, yeah doing and the then gravel we're gonna, lesson. And yeah, we're gonna talk about. Okay, so I got my parts cleaned up. Now each one of them glues on the side like this. Now there are a lot of tabs you got to get lined up. So again, I really strongly recommend you dry fit this first. And this is kind of tricky. This is going to take some patience. It's even difficult for me to get all this to go together. And if you're done having more, this is really pretty tough. Okay. And it should go. And I'm going to try this one over here. Turn it up on edge so I can see if I can see where the okay. So yeah, you just gotta kind of fight with this thing and wrestle with it. Uh-oh, I lost okay my back. Yeah. Um I would be kind of gentle with it, but yeah, it should be okay. Alright, so that was kind of tricky getting that guy on there. If we have trouble getting the one on this side, we may have to do a little sanding on our tabs to make them all fit. And hopefully that's not the case. Kind of had to wiggle my backboard there a little bit. The other thing that I did was I got two started at the beginning here. Are the two, these two down here going? Surprised I'm having this much trouble. Oops. There we go. Okay, you can actually kind of pound on As long as you've got it supported, you can get a little uh, forceful with it. Okay, so those guys are on there. If you're having trouble, take your sandpaper and sand those tabs down a little bit. Try to get a little bit more room in there. Okay. All right, so if, you can take it and just sand the tab like this. Kind of sand a little point on the tab will help. Okay, see, I'm sanding that edge this way to make it pointed like this. And that's going to help. I'm going to do that to all three of them. Okay, kind of round those tabs off a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing to the back sides of the bottom ones. Okay, make sure you don't pull your whole thing apart here. I think if you are having trouble with this, you can just let it sit and harden up for a while and come back and glue these walls on later. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one. Make sure, let me go ahead and glue this guy on. Okay, there it goes. All right. So I'm going to put some glue all along this face here. Okay, oops, I'm out of glue. So I just ran out of one syringe. Hopefully you guys are in roughly the same, use, use roughly the same amount of glue. We got, we're almost done, so you can go ahead and get a little bit more, uh, we also want to put glue on this edge here and here. And that's pretty tricky. You've got a lot of different tabs we've got to get lined up. So 
Just kind of take your time, do some sanding, and make sure it fits before you put the glue on. It's really important to dry fit it here because once you get the glue on, you saw how much trouble I had. It would have been a real mess if I had to go back and try to sand this with all that glue on there. I want to make my parts. I also want to put some glue along this edge here on our front of our ball gate. Okay. So I've got glue here, I've got glue all along here, and I've got glue all along here. Okay. I'm going to turn this up right. But I still do need to be careful. This thing is still not quite entirely dry. Okay, there we go. Look at that fit. Those little sanding that really helped that go on a lot better. So I really do think you should try to do that if you're having trouble getting yours to fit. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. Let's pop this guy back off. Yeah, it's really tight. So I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to sand these tabs down, get a nice rounded edge on them. I have a little trouble with my backboard there. I probably need a little bit more glue on that. Or did I? I don't know that I ever actually glued it on. All right, we'll put some glue on there in a minute. That's not what I want to do. Okay, well don't forget, Carter, you can always uh, rewind and watch. You guys are having any trouble with this, struggling a little bit. Remember, that's perfectly normal. Even I'm having to struggle a little bit to get this to go together. So I shouldn't worry about that. The main thing, just take your time. And get these tabs sanded properly, or sanded so that it's going to fit together a little more easily. Okay. Now I'm going to put some glue on this top edge here. I don't go crazy with the glue. We still have a little bit more to glue after this, but not very much. We're almost done. Okay, I'm put this other side on. Okay. Now, one thing I am having a little issue with, is I've got this little gap here in my backboard. What I can do is I can put a little bit more glue on there. bit more glue down along here. Okay. Alright, then if I just let it sit like this, the weight of itself will actually kind of hold that down. Now ideally what we'd do is stop here and let this dry for a while. But why don't we take a couple minute break? Okay, that'll also give everybody. To, we'll do about five minutes, guys, and then we'll be back and uh, go from there. See you in a minute.
right, we're back again. That was probably our last break. Now, don't worry if you're behind. It's okay. Remember, you can go back, take your time, rewind, and watch as much as you want to. I want you to make sure that you take your time and do a good job building this because I want it to work well for you and I want you to have fun playing with it and building it. So just, just relax and make sure that uh, you're doing everything right and take your time. Okay, the last part we're going to do here is get our ramp uh, mounted to the base and then we're done. We'll actually be ready to play. So we're going to need these two pieces here. Okay. And you'll notice one of them says bottom piece on the front. And one of them says top piece. Okay. The bottom piece, which is the one we were sanding earlier. Remember we were sanding this large hole in here. Um, we're going to do a little test fit real quickly. So it goes in the base just like this, right? Let me take these rubber bands off so you can see. Okay. And there are four little holes. And that goes with the four little holes in the base, okay? So I'm going to set that in there, kind of line it up as close as you can. Then our rotator piece that we made, the first thing we put together, drops down in that hole. Let's get this up here where you guys can see it. Okay? And it should be able to turn. I'm going to take a couple of my binder clips. And I'm going to clamp this down. Okay? You can also put pegs in your holes, but they have a tendency to want to fall out. So I'm just using my binder clips just to hold that bottom piece in place. And the, and the words bottom are facing up. Really doesn't matter, but you might as well go ahead and have the, the words bottom piece facing upward. Okay, then I want to test fit to make sure my part rotates. Looks like mine's doing pretty well. A little bit of sawdust down in there, so I'm going to blow that out. Okay, so it should rotate pretty easily. I'm going to take the two binder clips off, and I'm going to take the top piece, okay, top piece right here, with the words down, I'm going to put it over and drop it over. Now you notice that the diameter of this hole right here is smaller than the diameter of the bottom of our rotator, and that's so that it, this top piece holds it on and keeps it all in place. So that's the idea behind there. So I know one one person or one um, kit went out with two top pieces. If you don't have those pieces, you can kind of skip this step for now. We'll send you the, the part and then you can glue it on. But even without it, you can still play just by putting the base on here. In a minute, I'll show you how to put the ramp in. And you can just kind of hold it and still play the game. So you don't have to have these pieces right now in order to be able to play. So, hmm? Were you going to talk about the parabola? I will, yes. I'm going to talk about that once we kind of get everything going here. All we have to do is glue these last pieces down and we're 99% done. And then we can kind of move on. So, I've got the bottom piece. What I'm going to do is put glue on the back side. Now you notice we want to keep glue away from this hole because we don't want to glue this piece to this piece. So you want to make sure when you put the glue on here to keep it kind of far away from the edge of the of the hole. And you may get a little bit of glue, particularly around this thin part here, you may get a little bit of glue squish out when you uh, push this down. But don't worry about that. You can wipe that up with paper towel. Okay, so I've got plenty of glue on the back side here. Okay. Now I'm going to put it face down, try to line up with the holes as best you can. Okay, kind of squish it down. Okay, I got lucky there's no glue on this inner ring here, which is a good thing. I don't want any glue down in there. Okay, and I'm going to take the four shortest pegs, right, the four little short pegs, tiny little bit of glue on there, okay, put them down in the hole. Now if they fall through, and that's actually what's going to happen here, just leave them off for a minute. Don't worry about them. Now I want to put, actually I want to go ahead and put glue on the shaded area. See the, the part of the top, the bottom piece where those little, little lines are. I'll put the glue. Try not to put any glue in this little ring around here. There's about an eighth of an inch, about three or four millimeters. This little ring all around here where there is no um, laser cuts, no little dark lines. Keep the glue away from that, out of that little area. Okay. So I'm putting my glue on. I want to get plenty of glue to the outer edge. Okay. Need a little bit more right there. 
and I drop my rotator part in. I want a little bit more glue right back here. All right, then I put the top piece on with the lettering down. You can put it, the lettering up if you want. It doesn't make any difference. I just don't like to look at it, so. Okay, then now I'm gonna put my four pegs in. And there's enough glue squishing out in these holes that I really don't need to put any glue on my pegs, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on there. And again, you kind of have to wiggle everything around to make it fit. Okay. Now, every so often I want you to take the, take the rotator part and turn it, just to make sure if there's any glue down in there, you're breaking that old bond and you're not allowing it to dry and glue your rotator together. So every couple of minutes here, just grab that uh, rotator part and just kind of rotate it around. Okay, so I'm going to put my four pegs down. And if you can't get the pegs in, that's okay. All the pegs really do is just keep everything kind of lined up in the center. But it doesn't have to be perfectly centered in order for the game to still work just fine. Okay, so I got my four pegs in. I'm going to grab this again. I, I, I can feel that it doesn't feel like there's any glue down in there. It turns nice and um, freely. I'm going to take a couple binder clips. Just put it on the back side, just like this. Okay, just to kind of help hold everything together. Okay, I want to make sure my pegs are all flush with the top, just because it looks nicer, at least I think it looks nicer when the... Okay, then there's one last step we have to do, and we're ready to play. All right, grab the bolt. It's called a carriage bolt, it has a round head on it, and the washer. Okay, now you'll notice that in the top piece, or the top piece, the, the uh, angle gauge on the rotator part has a square hole in it. Put the bolt through the square hole. If you also look at the bottom of the carriage bolt, these are designed this way. This part right here is square, okay? Since you can't put a wrench on this top part, it's round, okay? They make that little square so that it can drop down in a hole and the corners bite, and that's what keeps it from turning when you put the nut on the other side. So I want to test fit it make sure that my bolt goes all the way through there. See that should stick out about half an inch or about 12 or so millimeters. All right, looks like it fits fine. I'm going to take it back out. Now it's time to put the, uh, the ramp in. So go get your ramp and slide it down in there. You want to, you may have to force this apart just a little bit, but slide the ramp down in there. Kind of look through and line up that one hole that we didn't put any pegs in and put the bolt through there. You may have to wiggle it and kind of twist it a little bit to get it to all go through. Then make sure that the square part of the bolt here goes all the way into the hole. I know it's kind of hard to see. Make sure that square part of that bolt head goes all the way flush so that you can see there sort of right under my thumb, right above my thumb there that the round part is all the way flush against the angle gauge. Now, put the washer on the other side, okay, and take your thumb screw and screw the nut onto the washer. Now, you want to be gentle with this thumb screw. It's not exactly the strongest piece in the world. So, as long as you're careful, just gently tighten it down, and there you go. Okay, so our thing is now thing. Our uh, ski ball is now pretty much done. I'm going to rotate back around. I'm going to leave my binder clips on there for a while, just kind of help everything glue. But you'll see I can rotate by adjusting the tightness of this nut here. I can tighten it and it makes it a little bit more difficult, not difficult, but makes it hold the ramp a little tighter. If, it's, if I want it a little bit looser, I back it off just a little bit and then I can rotate it down. And you'll see that all the little angle measurements on our angle gauge there um, line up with the top edge of this, and that's the angle at which this thing, your ramp, is inclined. Okay, so you can kind of, kind of use that as a gauge. All right, now if you want to, you're actually ready to play. Yes, question? Well, yeah, there was one I had missed earlier. Okay. And Vanya just pointed it out to me. Um, and you said, I may have used a long peg instead of a medium 
um, peg on his arm. Oh, that's okay. And he said, I will need a, I will need another long peg probably. Or is that okay? Uh, you, oh, another long peg for your, for your target stack? Well, they're not critical. You could use a short peg in your target stack too. It just will stick down a little lower. So you're okay. It's, it's nothing to be worried about. You can make that all work out. So he can use a, he's, he's behind, so he's yeah. not hearing you in real time. Right, right, right. So he, he can use a short peg. He could use a short peg in the target. Yeah, that's fine. That's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about how this game is played and how it works. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with skee ball, but this is kind of our own little uh, version of that. So I've got the steel balls. All right. And I'm going to adjust the angle. You get in, and part of this is learning what angle and what height to drop the balls from to get them to hit the various holes. Okay, and you can see how they're scored. If you want, you can see the little, the little hole in the top is obviously 100 points. It's hardest to hit. The one next to that is 20 points. Okay, the big circle is 30 points. Okay, the hexagon is 40 points. The little Half moon at the top is 15 points, and then anywhere in there that you don't hit and the ball goes down and disappears gives you five points because it's the easiest one to hit. Okay, so what you do is you just start practicing and playing by aiming at whatever particular hole you want to try to hit. And you drop the ball from various heights. Oops, first time I got it in the trap there. Okay, you can see I got trapped, all right? Um, but this is kind of the fun of learning how to play this game. Oh, five points there. Is where do I drop it from? You know, that's why I've got these letters, these letters, numbers up the side here. But if I get really good and I know what angle I want to put it at, I can get pretty good at hitting any target I want. Okay, got 20 points that time. Now the other thing is, you're going to discover that there's a lot of bounce involved in this game. And so not necessarily hitting the target dead on is what you want to do. You're going to learn how to use the bounce in order to get it to go in the different targets. Now the hardest one is obviously the big one, the little one, the little circle in the back corner. And that one you pretty much have to hit dead on in order to get it to uh, score. And you might want to change the angle. And we're going to talk about this angle in a minute and what that means. Yes. So there are people that are behind, and if we're going to talk about this, maybe people have questions because they can pause what they're doing and come into the... Yeah, I think you should probably do that. Yeah. Have them come to the live part? Yes. Why don't you go ahead and come to the live part? We're we'll going to talk a little bit about the science behind this. Okay. Put it in yeah. chat. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. So I've got my ramp inclined at a given angle, and in this particular case... It happens to be 50 degrees. Now, like we talked last time, when I put the ball and I lift it up here, it now has some potential energy. Again, I'm holding it back with my finger and I happen to actually be at 325. When I let it go, obviously the ball rolls down the ramp, picks up kinetic energy. It goes down around the curved part and then it comes back up and it flies through the air and it lands on somewhere in the target. Well, that path that the ball is going through that curve is called a parabola, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more about those parabolas. The shape of that parabola changes as I change the angle of the arm and as changes from how far up I let it go. So we've got some video here. I want to show you, first of all, I think we started at about 80 degrees, okay, which is a very steep angle here, okay, and then the ball comes out at a very shallow angle at the bottom, so it's running almost parallel to the ground. And let's take a look at that, Keith. Can we bring up our first set of parameters here? Now we're going to show you dropping it at 80 degrees, and then we've got some slow motion here. Okay, then we drop it from a little bit higher up, and you notice, you know, we're going to go back and watch this again in just a minute. Okay. So the little colored part is the curve that the ball is following. So let's stop. Let's go, yeah, now we're at 40, 400 millimeters. Okay, and we're looking at this shape. So let's go back again, and we'll kind of pause on the first. Can we do that? Can we pause? Can't pause. Okay. Um, go ahead and play it again. All right, there we are. Now see the little white 
parabola there is the ball following the path. There's a blue one. We've dropped it from higher. Notice that it's getting wider now because the ball is going faster because it's dropping from higher. And again, the green is even wider still. It's almost the same height. Okay. And then the red is the longest one because we dropped it from the highest. Yeah, now the red should be the longest one, but the red was actually a little shorter, and that is because it didn't ride down the ramp smoothly. Ah, okay. So we lost some energy. We lost a little bit of energy. Yeah. All right. So that's at 80 degrees. Now let's look at the shape of this if we go to a more shallow angle. So we're going to drop down to 60 degrees. Okay, so now it's not quite as steep. And let's look at the shape of the parabola now. Okay, here's the one from 200. And we're going to compare all of these in a few minutes. So we'll be able to we can also ask some questions if there's anything in the chat if we want to challenge anybody. Okay, yeah, we can do that. All right, and notice how this, at 60 degrees, the balls are going higher. Okay, and each one is getting higher relative to the other. Oh, we had the launcher there. All right, now let's go one more. We're going to take it all the way down to about 40 degrees, I believe, is what we did the last time. Okay, and then we dropped from such a low distance there that it wouldn't even go up the ramp. Okay, so now there's our blue cone. It's very pointed. Okay, a little higher. Now, see how much higher this one's getting right now. We're going to talk about why that is in just a minute. Okay, and even higher and flatter still. Okay, so here we are, 40 degrees. You can see the difference in the shapes of those. At 80 degrees, it's very flat and very spread out. 60 degrees is higher and not quite as spread out. And 40 degrees is very flat or very narrow, but very pointed. And you'll also see, if you look at those different colors, if you look at the 80 degrees, see how they're almost all the same height, okay? And 60 degrees, they start getting a little bit different height. There's a difference between the light blue, the green, the kind of brown, and then the red. And then if you look at 40 degrees, we only have three because the first one didn't even make it off the ramp. Well, I have a question. Okay, question. Well, for those, for us, it's obvious what 40, 60, and 80 degrees is. We've had mm -hmm. geometry. Right. A lot of these kids haven't had geometry and no, okay. have a visualization of what 60 right. or right. 80 is. is well, let's do this. Go and kind of show them. Yeah, let's come back. All right. So, you know, a circle is divided up in degree, into degrees. Let's get my, oops, it's time for the whiteboard here. Okay, we're going to try something new with this whiteboard. It may be a little bit clumsy, and, but we'll see how this goes. All right. So, for those of you, where'd my pen go? I had a dry erase. What did I do with it? Oh, it's down here. No, it's not down in here. No, oh, here it is. I got it. I got it. Okay. I'm going to turn this this way because it's just too tall. All right. Here we go. So I've got a circle. Pretend like that's round. Okay. And a circle consists of, if you divide it up, it has 300 and 60 degrees, okay? All the way around the circle. Okay, so we can divide that up again into four pieces. So a single degree is gonna look something about like that. Okay, it's really narrow, degree's pretty small. Okay, the next interesting one is one that goes straight up to the center and then straight over, okay? That's called perpendicular and that's 90 degrees, okay? And 90 is one fourth of 360 because there are four of these. You can imagine this one over here, if I come down, straight down, all the way through, straight line all the way through the center of the circle and all the way down, that's 180 degrees, okay? And that's half a circle. 90 is half of 180, so 90 is one fourth of the circle there, okay? And then you can come on around here and if we did this, which looks like 90 degrees, but if you go from here all the way around, that's going to be 90 plus 180 is 270 degrees, okay? And then you go all the way back up, keep going all the way on up to here, zero or 360 degrees, and you've gone all the way around the circle. So let's apply that to this guy right here. Now in this case, I'm going to pretend like 
my circle in this drawing that I just did, I let my zero start up here at the top, my zero degree, then I went all the way around, 90 would have been over here, 180 degrees would be down here, 270 would be over here, because and then 360 or zero would be at the top. Um, but what I'm going to do in this case, for the case of our um, ramp, I'm going to rotate everything around. So I'm going to let my zero start here, and I'm going to make this one up here be 90 degrees. Okay, so I've gone through the curve here, 90 degrees. And the degree symbol is a little circle at the top, just like you think of with temperature. Okay, so if you look at your ball ramp, and I have it all the way straight up, just like this line here is straight up, it's reading 90 degrees. If you look in there, I can set this down for a second. Hmm? Okay, I've got the ball, the ramp is straight up, and that's 90 degrees. So in other words, it's straight up and down, or perpendicular to the surface of the table. Then as I rotate backwards, there's 10 degrees, or I'm now at 80 degrees from straight up, or from the side, and then 70 and 60 and 50 and so on and so forth. And I really didn't go past 30 degrees because the ball doesn't go very far, even at 30 degrees, you don't even quite make it. Well, I got the bounce into the target. And those numbers are on that other thing, is that how you're reading There are degrees, yeah, the numbers are right here. Okay, so all, I mean, they can see it. Okay, so really, you don't have to understand what the degrees are, as long as you know that if you say, well, if I put this at 50 degrees and I drop from 275 millimeters up, I almost, but not quite, just barely get there. So if I go up to 60 degrees and I drop from 275, now I made it all the way in. So I can memorize these different angles and different heights from which I drop, and that helps me hit the target each time. Okay. Oh, I got 100. Look at that. All right. That's pretty cool. Okay. That's very All good right. To stop on that. We did have a question. So, okay. Uh, sure. No. But what about the foul? The foul. Okay. Now, when I first built this game and was playing it, um, I didn't like all the bounce I was getting. Okay. It would hit in the hit in the target and then come out, and I, that for some reason didn't I didn't like that. It bothered me, so I started thinking about ways of how can I put something on here that will make the ball hit and stop and land in the hole rather than using the bounce. So I came up with the idea of putting a little felt cap on top of the hole. Let me get this one out of the way and cutting a little hole in the felt so that the ball would go through there, but then the felt would keep it from popping out. And the other thing I did, you have these little parts here, and these are all optional parts. You're welcome to use these or not use these, depending on how you like to play the game. I actually, now that I've gone through all this and I went back to my original design, I like it the best. But if you want to play this way, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, now these little rings here, you can glue onto, let's set this out away for a second. Oops. You can glue them onto the uh, face of your board there. And it's obvious which one goes where. Okay, and th doing this makes it a little bit more challenging because now you can't use the bounce as easily. If you like a more challenging game, you can glue these on there. And now the ball, sometimes when it hits up here, it will roll down. Without the ring, it will roll down and drop in here but with the ring in there, that prevents that from happening. So now you have to figure out how to make it launch down the ramp and fly through the air and land in there um, or bounce into there in order to score. It makes it a little bit more challenging. And if you wanna make it to where you make it a little bit easier, you can glue the felt on top of that too and then cut a little hole, or cut a little hole in it first and then glue it on and that kind of helps catch the ball as it goes into the target. So really, it's up to your personal preference how you want to play. I would suggest that you play it first without any of the rings so that you can at least see what it's like. Then, if you want to change it, you can go ahead and glue those on. Okay. 
and play it that way. But once you glue them on, they're kind of on there. You can't get them off very easily. So you have to, uh, you have to decide if you want to glue those on or not. And you can glue them on, then put the different felt pieces on there. Um, you can cut your own, you can cut a small hole in the middle of it. You can cut a large hole in the middle of it. That's up to you. It just depends on how you want to customize your game. Okay. Now, what else? Let's see. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, yeah. The next project. Did anybody, if you are very astute, well, I don't know. There's a lot going on back here, so it's really kind of hard to tell what the next project is. But the next project, well, you can tell it's either a battleship or an airplane or a train or a car. And of those four, which do you think would be easiest to put into a kit? Okay. Well, it's going to have to be this little airplane right here. Okay, and it's a pretty cool little model of an airplane. This thing actually flies. Okay, and the cool thing about this, I'm going to let Keith talk a little bit about this too, because he actually designed this airplane. But it's got these really nifty little hinges on here where I can adjust the different air surfaces and I can experiment with putting these at different angles and seeing how those affect the flight, right? So, yeah, you, you pretty much hit on it. The, the yeah. idea behind this, the concept behind this kit is to give you a real idea of how airplanes actually use their control surfaces. Right. So uh, if you go to any toy store or Walmart or wherever and you buy a $5 foam glider, then um, it's probably honestly going to fly better than this one. But you don't have much control over how that one flies. You kind of buy it, you throw it, and it does what it does, and you can change a few things. So what we're going to learn in this uh, build is how weight affects the plane, how the plane flies, both the total weight and where the weight is located. We're also going to learn about how each control surface operates and how it affects the way the airplane flies. And you'll be able to take this out to a park or anywhere you've got a, a reasonable uh, amount of space. It's not an indoor airplane, uh, but a reasonable amount of space. And you'll be able to fly it, and we are we're even going to include a uh, catapult launcher, a rubber band launcher. Um, I've done yeah. some testing with that. That's what the little hook is for. Right? Yeah, there's a little hook on the back of it. Uh, I've done some testing with that, and uh, it does work. It's a little harder to get it to work with the catapult, but I think once you've done the basic flying and you know what each control surface does, uh, you'll probably want to launch it harder and see how far you can get this thing to go. So I'm looking forward to it. We're not going to announce a live stream date. We learned our lesson with this kit. <laughs> uh, there are some pieces that we need that um, have not shipped yet. They're special pieces. We need them and they're only available from a supplier and they're having a hard time getting them to us. But we hope to announce it uh, as well. We'll announce it as soon as we can. Hopefully right. next week is our goal. Yeah. And it shouldn't be as long as the last one. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoy your ski ball. And anything else? Order? No, no. Um, soon, next day or two. Okay. okay, yes, we'll be able to, sometime over the weekend, you can start ordering this kit, and I think it's going to be a fun one, too. And tell anybody if they were missing parts to right. um, email or text with their name and the name of the part they're missing. Okay, if, yeah, if you've got any missing parts, please text or email Dawn at, what is it, Newton's Attic? Dot com. Yeah. Dot com, all right. Or text her. Uh, cell phone and we'll get you those parts out as soon as we can. I'll put that All number right. in the chat. She'll put the number in the chat. You can find it there. Just don't call it at four o'clock in the morning because she doesn't, <laughs> she turns it off. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy it and this has been a nice long build and we'll see you next time.